right in now. Thank you. Just a moment, I'll be right with you. Oh, fine. Okay. How do you do? Hello. Won't you have a seat? Oh, thank you. And uh, you are? Anne Marie. Anne Marie. Right. Thanks for coming in, Miss Marie. Oh, the pleasure's all mine, believe me. Uh, do you have pictures? Oh, yes. I have more pictures than jobs. Here's uh, my composite. And uh, here's my book. Th there's one each of me running, standing, sitting, smiling, crying, and sexy. <laughs> well, maybe not too sexy. The girl we're looking for will have to have a little bit of everything. When they see this commercial, we'd like every girl in America to identify with the pop girl. The who? The pop girl. Uh, what you're here for? Oh! Oh, my agent didn't tell me what the product was. He just said to get over there. So that's what it is, the pop girl. Hey, that's terrific. What's pop? Pop. Pop? Soda pop, a new soft drink. It's soda pop, so why not call it like it is? Oh, I see. Pop. Hey, that's a terrific idea. When somebody asks for a bottle of pop, that's exactly what they're going to get. A bottle of your pop. What a terrific idea. And I'll bet that's why you thought of it. <laughs> what flavor is it? Well, I can't tell you that. But it's got a little bit of everything. Like the pop girl. Well, Mr. McCorkle, I just want to tell you that aside from my acting experience on stage and on television, I've had years of experience drinking pop. Yes. Uh, well, I'm sure, Miss Marie, that your credits are very good. I'd like to keep this composite, if I may. Oh, sure. We're seeing several other girls, and we'll make a decision in a couple of days. Oh, fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's all right. out there? No, sir. Do you think you found someone? Well, I'm not sure. I'd say it was between this girl and that girl. to the door. You could have slipped in the tub or been hit over the head by a crazed burglar or... Got my zipper stuck? Or got your zipper stuck. Come on, the feature starts at 6.45. Oh, Donald, can't we wait a few minutes? I haven't heard from Seymour yet about that job. The commercial? Yeah. Well, well, honey, you can leave a message with your service. Oh, Donald, I found out they're going to test market it out in the West Coast. And if it goes, they're going to have this really big campaign. And if I'm picked, I could be a very desirable and a very wealthy young lady. Uh-huh. Well, money isn't everything. Oh, Donald, please, just a few minutes. Okay. Five minutes. What's it for? Well, it's for this soft drink called Pop. Hey, that's cute. You know, I wonder why they call soft drinks soft and hard drinks hard, when in reality, hard drinks are just as soft as soft drinks. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Seymour. He did? I am? I do? Oh, dear. Oh, no, that's fine. Okay, Seymour. Thanks. Bye. Well, good news? Almost. You almost got it, but missed. No, I still almost got it. It's between me and another girl. Well, that's good news. There's more. Oh? I have to go back there tomorrow so they can hear me sing. <laughs> you sing? Yeah. Well, there are lots of other jobs. 
Donald, that was cruel. Well, sweetheart, singing isn't one of your top ten numbers. Well, I'm not that bad. I didn't say you were that bad. I, I mean, you, you might get the job. You can carry a tune. Yeah, except I drop it a couple of times along the way. <laughs> Donald, what am I going to do? Well, you're certainly not going to improve your voice overnight. No. So just go tomorrow, sing, and hope for the best, that's all. Oh, sure, that's easy for you to say. And it'll be a lot easier for you if you just relax tonight and go to a movie. Oh, I don't think I could go to a movie now. Oh, come on. It'll do you good. Get your mind off your problems. Oh, okay. What are we gonna say? Singing in the rain. Thanks. The song of Norway, Sound of Music. Donald. With the song in my heart, the singing fool. That's enough. 20,000 years in Sing Sing. Be cool. <laughs> Uh, Miss Marie, you can put your hands down now. Oh, I was just surrendering. <laughs> no good, huh? Well, if you just sounded like you look, I mean, you look so perfect, just what we want. Why can't you sing? When they took out my tonsils, they did a rotten job on my adenoids. I am stupid. Oh, no, you had no way of knowing. I mean, you don't have to sing. I don't? No, we'll lip sync you. You what? Lip sync. We'll use your face, your figure, but someone else's voice. <gasps> of course, like they did in My Fair Lady. Right, we do it all the time. Oh, what a terrific idea. Why didn't we think of that in the first place? Because I'm stupid. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I mean, I forgot that's what you said. Uh, well, congratulations, pop girl. Oh, did I really get it? Oh, Mr. McCorkle, thank you. Oh, my gosh, the pop well, girl. It's okay. You can lip sync, can't you? Oh, sure, I do it all the time. Good, but you should rehearse with the pop jingle. Uh, this is a demonstration record that the writer made. Take it home and run through it a few times. Right, don't worry, I'll get it perfect. And we'll call you as to the time in the studio. I'll practice real hard. Fine. Mr. McCorkle? What's that? That's thank you very much in lip sync. Why don't you stop and have a pop with me? Pop the drink that's heavenly. It tickles your nose while it tingles your toes. Stop and have a pop with me. Well, what do you think? Well, that's a little slow, isn't it? Oh, yeah? Well, they've got a faster one. Why don't you stop and have a pop with me? Pop the drink that's heavenly. It tickles your nose while it tingles your toes. Stop and have a pop with me. Well? Well, I was faster. Thanks. Well, well uh, honey, it's, it's much better, except you're still opening your mouth too wide. Yeah. OK, I'll try it again. No, no, look, why don't you just relax for a minute? Boy, is my throat tired. Why? You haven't said anything. Exactly. It's unnatural for a woman to open her mouth that often and not have any sound come out. <laughs> I've never been so frustrated in my life. Why don't you stop and have a pop with me? Pop the drink that's heavenly. It tickles your nose while it tingles your toes. Stop. And have a pop with me. Uh, uh. Cut. Very good. Print it. Frank, you can go get cleaned up now. And that was fine. Oh, great. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Look, we're going to set up a new angle. Why don't you take a break? Okay, fine. Over here, fellas. And. Oh, hi. It's going just great. I couldn't be happier. Neither could I. I'd like you to meet your voice. Oh, I'd love to. Rose. Anne Marie, Rose Cassinetti. Hi. Oh, Rose, am I glad to meet you. Boy, when I heard that recording, I said, what a terrific voice. 
but I said it to the recording. Now I can tell you, you really sing great. Oh, thank you. I think you're marvelous, too. Oh, thanks. But without your voice, I'd be nothing at all. Since neither of you have anything nice to say about me, I'm leaving. Sorry. Well, no, I've got a lot of work to do. I'll see you later. Bye. 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 Would you like some coffee? Sure. How long have you been singing? Oh, since I was 14 months old. Oh, no, I meant professionally. Since I was 14 months old. Really? Yeah. I started to sing, and my brother gave me a quarter to shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess it's been about a year. Mm. How you doing? Pretty good. You? Ah, uh, okay. Who's your agent? Oh, I don't have one. Actually, I know this drummer, and he finds out where there are jobs for singers, and he lets me know. Oh, my gosh. You depend upon a drummer to get you jobs? Oh, he's also my brother. Oh. Well, don't you think you'd be better off getting a regular agent? If you can't depend on your brother, who can you depend on? Oh, why do you mean you can't depend on your brother? It's just that, well, what do you do about television shows and stage jobs? Oh, well, I don't care about them. What I'm doing is fine. <sighs> Look, Rose, I don't want to get personal. You already got. Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, don't be. People interested in other people is terrific. What did you say? I said it's nice to have someone want to know about you. No, you said terrific. Oh, I say terrific a lot. To describe almost anything. That's terrific, that is. So do I. My boyfriend says I overdo it. Well, we terrific users are the only ones who really understand how terrific terrific is. You can't explain that to a non-terrificer. That's for sure. Ann, we're ready for you now. Coming, Mr. Johnson. I'll see you right after this shot, Rose. Oh, terrific. <laughs> terrific. Here, Rose. Hi, Tony. What are you doing here? We're doing a jingle next door, so I thought I'd drop in and spy on my sister. Listen, no one here knows but Mr. McCorkle. You know, I think you're nuts making such a big deal. It's no big deal, and it's not that important. It's just I know in these situations, people get very uncomfortable when they know I'm a nun. What's so uncomfortable about being around a nun? You're used to it. But other people are so busy trying not to offend me, they can't relax. You know, you may be right, except once I would love to introduce you. Friend, I'd like you to meet my sister, the sister. <laughs> What were you saying, honey? Well, well, I was just thinking, it's a shame that such a talented, pretty, bright, and witty girl has to go unnoticed. By whom? By producers, by the public. Yeah, well, if she's as good as you say she is, it is a shame. I mean, millions of people are gonna see me sing in that commercial. But it won't be me, it'll be her. Well, she got paid, didn't she? I mean, it's just a shame. And I'll probably get other jobs, too, from producers as a result of seeing me sing in that commercial. I don't think so. Why not? Well, honey, eventually you're going to have to sing in person and... Okay, we'll cancel that reason. Reason? Reason for what? Well, Donald, I'm just trying to tell you all the reasons I think I should help Rose's career. Oh, boy. No speeches. No speeches. Just two words. Don't interfere. Oh, Donald, she even said herself how terrific it is when people get interested in other people. There's a big difference between interest and meddling. Look, honey, you're a very good-hearted woman. Woman? Of uh, a lady. Lady? Girl. Continue. You're a very good-hearted girl, but very often people don't want any help. They're satisfied with the way things are. I know, I know. It's just that I have a very intuitive feeling about Rose. I just know that with a good agent and, and top professional advice and makeup and wardrobe, she could really go far. What's your plan? Well, first I'd like her to meet Seymour. I know the minute he hears her sing, he's gonna want to represent her. And then? Well, then I'll have to leave a lot of the decisions up to Seymour and Rose. Why, are you leaving town? <laughs> I'm just trying to help. You know, honey, if you were up here, I could readily understand you're wanting to help somebody down here. But you are also down here. Just a minute. Much better. After all, I have done a lot more jobs than she has. One of the main things you're forgetting is that she may not want your help. With the drummer brother for an agent? Donald, please. She may be perfectly happy singing commercials, and she may resent your interference. She's not the resenting type. Am I wasting my time discussing this with you? I think so. Okay. Okay. Then I go on record with a large I told you so, waiting to be dropped on your pretty little head. Well, you'll never use it, because when Seymour hears her, he's gonna flip. He's a very smart agent who understands and knows more about talent than anybody. 
So Posey hates her. What does he know? Hi, is there a Tony Cassanetti here? Oh, thank you. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Are you Tony Cassanetti? Right. Oh, good. My name is Anne Marie. That's good, too. <laughs> Mr. McCorkle from the advertising agency told me that I might be able to find you here. Oh, yeah, I saw you in the studio one day. How are you? I'm just fine, thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt your reading. Oh, that's okay. Better your swing? I always thought you had rhythm or you didn't. I didn't know you could get it by reading a book. This is about golf. <laughs> uh, well, then I was right. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Mr. Cassinetti, I was looking for your sister. Why? Well, you know, we did that job together, the, the pop commercial, and I think she's just terrific. So do I. Oh, good. Well, what I'm trying to do is get her together with my agent. Does she know that? Well, no, I haven't been able to reach her. But Mr. McCorkle said if I found you, you might be able to give me her number. How much do you know about Rose? Well, only that she's cute and talented, and I'd like to help her. And my agent said if she's good, he can get her a couple of jobs. Maybe not as a single at first, but with a group. Yeah, well, she's with a pretty big group right now. Oh? She didn't tell me that. She's not much of a talker. Well, I hate to disagree with her brother, but I think Rose is very talkative. Why don't you write your number down and I'll have her give you a call? Well, couldn't you give me her number? It's better if she calls you. Oh, fine. Okay, have you got a pencil? Yeah. Look, could you have her call me right away? Because my agent, Seymour, is trying to arrange an audition with her and the musical and the variety people at the agency. Listen, I wouldn't make any plans until you've talked to her. Mr. Cassinetti, I can understand you're being protective about Rose, but I don't think you realize you have a very talented sister. Oh, I realize it, Miss Marie. For a sister, she's loaded with talent. <laughs> Okay, I'm coming. Hello. Hello. Is Anne Marie here? Uh, no, not right now. Was she expecting you? No, but I'm a friend of hers. Oh, well, that's a coincidence. So am I. I'm Don Hollinger. I'm Anne's boyfriend and vice versa. Oh, my name's Rose. R Rose the singer? Yes. Oh, well, come on in. Uh, well, I'd like to leave a message if I may. Yeah, well, well she'll be back in just a few seconds. Won't you come in? Yeah, you know, she was expecting you to call her. I know. That's what the message is about. You know, I really can't stay. Would you give it to her? Yeah, sure, sure. I'll, I'll have to write it down. I have a very bad memory. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Okay. What's the message? Please tell her that I appreciate what she's done, but it wouldn't be possible for me to make that audition. You wanted to reschedule it? No, I won't be able to make it at all. Rose. I don't think you know Anne very well. She thinks you're very good, and she's going to bother you until you make it. Well, what she doesn't know is that it would be impossible for me to make a career in show business. Why? Because I'm a nun. You're a nun? That's right. <laughs> it's not that funny. Oh, no, no. I, I'm, I'm sorry, sister. Believe me. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not laughing at you. I'm, I'm laughing at Anne. Why didn't you tell her? Well, because when people find out, they get ooky. Well, I didn't. That's right. You didn't. You laughed. You know, you could get in a lot of trouble laughing at nuns. <laughs> well, not for the right reasons. I still don't understand why you didn't tell her. Well, you see, the reason I sing is because I like to. And the money we raise kind of helps the orphanage where I'm assigned. Oh. Oh, sister, I, that's, <laughs> that, that's great. Just great. You see, you're getting ooky. <laughs> Justifiably. Listen. Right after I give Ann and I told you so, right between the eyes and explain, I'm, I'm sure she's going to want to speak to you. Well, if she does, I'm at St. Thomas's. Oh, well, uh, can she call you tonight? Uh, are you going to be home? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. She goes. As a matter of fact, I have a music appreciation class tonight. Oh, you do? Yes. Oh, well, well uh, sister, uh, listen, listen, would you mind terribly having a couple of visitors tonight? Not at all. We'd love it. Oh, great. Great. Okay. Thank you, sister. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt, come on, it's late. Where do we have to go? Uh, 589 East 87th Street. I don't know of any theater up there. Uh, she didn't say it was a theater. It's a hall or something. Oh. Well, I still think we should bring Seymour. No, 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 no. She said she wanted your reaction first. Hmm. And you said she wouldn't be interested. Yeah, well, uh... <laughs> 
fella can be wrong. And Seymour knows this fantastic designer who's done gowns for all the top Hollywood stars. Gowns? I saw a black slinky number that he made for Connie Stevens. Boy, does that gown fit. Fit? Mm -hmm. Every line, every curve. And from what I could tell, Rose's figure would look perfect in one of those tight slinky numbers. Oh, you really think so? I know so. And I was also thinking, for a change of pace, we could get her a blonde wig. It could look terrific. Hey, what about a sequin bikini? A sequin bikini? Well, maybe. But only when she plays Las Vegas. <laughs> show could she be doing here at a parochial school? Well, uh, probably a benefit. See what a nice girl she is. She's practically starving and she's doing benefits. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, do you know where room three is? Uh, would you tell us? Right over there, the next door down. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Where are you going, my one? That's her. Well, let's go in. Where are you going, my baby, my own? Then you're two. Turn around and you're four. Turn around and you're a young girl going out of the door. Turn around. Turn around, turn around, and you're a young girl going out of the door. Where are you going, my little one, little one? Little dirndls and petticoats, oh, where have you gone? Turn around and you're tiny, turn around and you're grown, turn around and you're a young wife with babes of your own. Turn around, turn around, turn around and you're a young wife with babes of your own. Thank you, children. Right now, Sister Margaret will play for you while I speak to some friends of mine. Hello, Anne. Hello, sister. Sister. I just don't know what to say. Really? Sister, you may have caused a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go get a cup of coffee. Come on. Sister, I have a confession to make. Sorry, I don't handle that. <laughs> no, I don't mean that kind. I didn't tell her. Oh! Oh, excuse me, Father. Oh, that's all right, my child. <laughs> Thank you. For what? For not saying I told you so. Oh, well, it's hardly necessary. Although I admit I am a bit compulsive. In this case, I was not completely wrong. How's that? Well, you've heard of the recording star, the singing nun. Right, right, absolutely right. And if I were you, I'd try to get Sister Rose a recording contract right away. You would? Yeah, and while you're at it, get her a parachute. A parachute? Well, I'm sure you've heard of the flying nun. <laughs> <laughs>